touching on the top picks and plays here for this NBA DFS slate on Monday. Let's go ahead and get into it. So starting at the guard position, we do need to get some injury news because if John Moran sits, then we would be looking at someone like Tyus Jones. Obviously just went off last night against Utah, 41 points. And that was with John Morant out. And if he's out, like this is a great matchup and a soft price tag. So he'd be someone that I think we'd just be trying to lock into our builds. And then also we'd be looking at Desmond Bain as well, would be someone that'd be way too cheap of a price tag. And the reason I think John Morant could still out this game, even though it's the back end of a back-to-back, is the fact that they're going against the Spurs. If he's even a little bit banged up, they are favored to win by double digit points right now. So like you could sit him and potentially still win. So that'd mean Desmond Bain and Tyus Jones are both going to be still really great plays and they could still hit value. Even if we don't get that, it just would obviously be much more risky. And then looking at like someone like CJ McCollum, I think he could be a, just a spectacular play, but also just a safe play at the same time. Looking at his production with both Brandon Ingram and Zion off the court, he just soaks up so much usage and his fancy point production is around 45 fantasy points per 36 with them off the court so we can see three straight games of averaging over 40 dk points like it should just be a safe locking in 38 dk points with the upside to give you 50 he has been shooting the ball a lot as well which is highly encouraging obviously that's with those two out the matchup with memphis is actually a game in which is projected to stay close so we shouldn't have to worry about the game blowing out, which seems to be the biggest worry right now in DFS, uh, NBA DFS specifically, is that games are just like randomly blowing out. Games are not staying close. That is going to be one that I like because it should stay close. From there, we also get news that Marcus Smart is going to sit, which means that Malcolm Brogdon should be a great price point play tonight going against Chicago. Now, they are favored to win by eight points, the Celtics are, and even if they do I think Malcolm Brogdon will still get those minutes. Uh, he should be a good play regardless. We can see, you know, three straight games of over what he would need to get to hit value for you tonight. And that was on limited minutes and less usage. Now with Marcus Smart out, the usage should be there. The minutes should be there. It wouldn't be shocking to see him honestly go off for 38 DK points like he did in the previous game. He is a strong player just needs the minutes and just sh should be a good play tonight. Josh Richardson is also someone I think we could look at price point wise. The, the worry here would obviously be the game being a blowout. And so if John Moran sits, I think he becomes a better play because then the minutes should be more secure for him. But we can see four straight games of over 20 DK points and he has shown the upside to go for 30 DK points. You know, makes sense as a GPP play. All right. So now moving down into the forwards, the forwards are, I guess, more, more straightforward. Like I really want to be on Giannis tonight going against the New York Knicks and just looking at his ownership thus far this morning. Not many people want to be on him, which is a little bit shocking. They're favoring Jokic, which isn't shocking. I mean, Jokic is a great play in a great match. But Giannis against the Knicks thus far, his last two matchups, 66 and 66 DK points. I mean, he has just went off against them, given the fact that also Drew Holiday currently going through some stuff, you know, only played 20 minutes the last two games, uh, was sick two nights ago, and then the team just got blown out. So, you know, Giannis only played two min or 22 minutes in that game as well. So I think that was just more or less what happened. It's just the Bucks got blown out. So I think Giannis at 12K, sure, that's a lot to pay up for him. And also the fact that Drew is back is going to hurt him. Like if Drew is playing a full allotment of minutes, that typically speaking would hurt Giannis. But given the fact that it's the Knicks, a team that he just always dominates against, I want to try to find a way to play Giannis tonight. From there, I will say Porzingis, Kyle Kuzma, I don't mind as plays, just given the fact that that game should stay close. Like if it does, they should be good plays. Jaron Jackson Jr. would be someone that would be a lock if I think John Morant's ruled out as well, uh, but more so if Steven Adams is ruled out and or Brandon Clark is ruled out, then he's a good Good GPP play as well. Really, if one of those three sit, we are playing Jaron Jackson Jr. with confidence. Now we can still play him regardless, but if those players are out, the usage is going to be there and the production is going to be more likely to be there. Steven Adams sat the last game and he had 45 DK points. He's had 45 and 54 DK points the last two games. So should be a really strong play for us tonight on tonight's slate. Patrick Williams is a guy that's coming in off of a bad night shooting. Uh two for ten. You know, that's not good. Prior to that, uh, you know, pretty good. So maybe we get a better night shooting from him. And if we do, this would be a cheaper price tag, more or less a shoulder shrug play. If you end up on him, he's fine. And then moving on into the centers, yes, Jokic against the Lakers is going to be highly appealing. It could he could easily go for 70 points. Like that wouldn't be shocking. Went for 58 against them the last time out. So, you know, even if we get that, that's still pretty good production. Like he should be a good play. Uh, the issue with the Lakers really on tonight's slate is the fact that they are expected to lose by double digit points. There's three games that are eight or more uh, for the spread. So that is not obviously. So there's worry there. That's why I'm bringing up like games blown out. I think JVal is looking like he's going to be a good play. Uh, just the upside GPP play. Like it won't be shocking to see him go for 40 DK points. And maybe, maybe that's why you don't play Giannis is so you can play JVal and also Jaron Jackson Jr. Uh, JVal can easily give 
give you 45 DK points at a cheap price tag. And, and so obviously that's something that we don't mind. Uh, looking at other centers. Oh, Bobo has been ruled out tonight. Okay. So with that, Wendell Carter is still going to be a decent play. Like I do expect him to get 30 DK points. I just don't expect him to really break the slate. Then we also look at Gafford at his price tag. This just seems like a cheap price tag. I don't really get it. Um, you know, just been killing it. Like what? I don't, I, it's tough to really figure out what's going on here. Five straight games of averaging, you know, almost 31 DK points. It's just someone that we should be trying to play. And yes, it's partially due to the fact that the games have been blots. If you look at the previous games that weren't exactly blots, he wasn't getting there. But I would say he's also earned himself some playing time too, like that extra rotation. So really the, the biggest question mark we have on this slate is going to be four guards or two centers. You know, that's what we're trying to figure out. So looking at the core plays on tonight's slate, yes, if we get news that John Moran, Sin and Tyus Jones and also Desmond Bain are going to be core plays, you just are going to need to play them. If we get news that John Morant or Steven Adams is sitting, Jaron Jackson Jr. is going to be a core play. Now, I feel like they're going to be good plays regardless, but if John Morant's out, that helps them out a little bit more. I wouldn't say J uh, J Val is a core play. I would say he's more or less a very strong GPP play like he has upside to really go out and break the slate. I think Malcolm Brodden should be treated as a core play just given his price and then Gafford as well. Like I want to try to fit him into our builds just because of that price tag like I am treating him as a core play. And I'm also treating Giannis as a core play like I want to find a way to fit Giannis into our builds uh, just given his production against the Knicks like he has just been dominant and we can see just been going off but he was going off with Drew Holiday missing time. So you know, not as safe of a play. So looking at the lineup process for today. Let's try to finish this specific build out first. And what I would try to do is probably chase the recent production from Marshall, you know, with uh, Ingram and with uh, Zion out. He's been pretty productive. So I'll chase that production. Then we have 5.8 left over. You know, not the best, but you could go Dylan Brooks. You know, I don't mind that. I don't love that. I feel like we're forcing that in there. And then maybe I guess instead we could go Harrison Barnes or Kevin Herter. Kevin Herter's shown a little bit more upside recently. So probably him and, and a little bit more consistency. So that'd be like a decent first look build. Um, and this is just assuming John Morant sits. If he plays, it does make the lineup process a little bit more difficult. So I guess I'll try that real quick as well. So let's take out the Memphis players, just assuming that uh, all the starters start because then they become less appealing. So if that happens, I'm probably trying to do more of a studs and duds approach and, and trying to fit Giannis in there. Still would like CJ McCollum. Go with Josh Richardson. Hopefully they keep it close. And then really, I think we'd probably just want to wait on some injury news to come out to finish out this build. Like for now, um, I guess I could plug in Connington. Hopefully he has a good night shooting. Uh, 6.4 left over. I, you know, could go with uh, Carter. You know, I'm fine with that. Not great, uh, but obviously... As the day progresses, we'll figure out who the top values are and we could easily make an adjustment there. But that's all I have for you guys for this video. You guys know what to do. If you enjoyed the coverage, make sure to give a like and subscribe. If you didn't enjoy the coverage, well, you know, like and subscribe, then I can help up my game a little bit more. <laughs> all right. Thanks for watching, guys. Let's have a good slate. And as always, let's keep cashing.